Welcome back to Let's Play The Punisher. Heading to a rather famous New York landmark this time. Chrysler building? Oh, pretty close. <laughs> Almost as good. The Eternal Sun is gonna hit Stark Industries to get Iron Tech armor for Jigsaw. My neighbor Dave is a huge Iron Man fan, so he and I are doing the tourist thing today. No armor is gonna save Jigsaw when I find him. Good old neighbor Dave. Yep, another character from Garth Ennis' run. Spacker Dave, as he insists on being called. Tell me. Jigsaw is... well, he's John Saint. You remember? The guy who killed your family. I know what he did. Thought I'd killed him. Yeah, Claymores kill most people. He lived, but it sent him through a window and shredded his face. So they started calling him Jigsaw. Your attacks on Eternal Sun operations are causing a major shakeup in the organization. Takagi's lost a lot of prestige. Good. Not good. Takagi's losing control. And Jigsaw's taken over. I didn't come here for gossip. Jigsaw wants you dead. A lot of that going around. But Jigsaw's stacking the deck. He's planning to hit Stark Industries tomorrow. Jigsaw wants Iron Man technology. Armor, a weapon, or blueprints or something. And he's willing to make a huge hit on Stark to get it. This is big! I'm not on Tony Stark's A-list, but I'll find a way in. We finally solved the Jigsaw puzzle. Boo! <laughs> it's John Saint. <laughs> Holy shit. John Saint, a.k.a. literally who? <laughs> yeah, not Spacker, Dave. Man, check out this hardware. Yep. Um, he's like uh, Joan and Mr. Bumpo. You might be yeah, he's similar to Doofus. Gets all these piercings pulled out by one of uh, Manucci's men. And winds up wearing bandages for the rest of the series. Because he thinks it looks even cooler. Yeah, it becomes a fashion statement later on. Yep, Everyone, spacking. Please stay calm. Security is on its way. What's happening, Mr. Castle? Shit's going down. Haha! <laughs> reference. Very bizarre reference. Yeah. Extra dimensional aliens. Wonder what they look like. This is not a comic book. Yeah, I mean, back in what 2005, 2000, uh, 2005. Um, even back then, there wasn't really much crossover between console players and PC gamers. Yeah. Hey, you're not supposed to. Someone help me! Call security! Help! Help! Well, yep, there's the one we couldn't save. Oh, this guy was nice enough to open the door for us, so... Yep. Interesting thing about this stage is that you come in completely unarmed. Yeah. Showed that off in the menu, we can't pick our weapons because there aren't any. Yep. Obviously, Tony Stark's not going to let people waltz in with guns. Yeah, but you think he would have better facial recognition software still, you know, when the freaking Punisher's walking in through his front door. One would hope. Nice radio. How do I listen in? You will never learn it! I remember more of the special interrogations from this level. Yeah, this one especially is pretty notorious. Yeah. The code is 7070! Looks like Frank's signing his name in him. <laughs> John Saint, meet John Hancock. <laughs> yeah, it just turns him into a bloody torso. <laughs> yeah. Burnt torso as well. It's going to be the result of a lot of our uh, executions. Yeah. They, they really do get creative in this one. Stay right yep. there, Dave. Watch the monitors and keep me informed. High tech, high brutality. And there's his catchphrase. It's not much of a catchphrase, but better than most. Not really. And he's not technically savvy in the comics, so... 
Uh, no. He... His entire thing is, I have piercings, and then I get brutalized, but it's cool because I'm relentlessly cheerful. Yeah, all he really is is loyal. Yeah, and dumb. Very, very dumb. <laughs> Tony seems to have some size issues. I'm not touching that one. <laughs> Here, help me unpack this. We must be ready before they return. Don't quite know what they're referring to, but I'm gonna brutalize them anyway. Nah, that's what they would have done. Yeah. What are you doing here? Are all Americans this violent? I think I will throw up. There's no escape. 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 <laughs> Not for you. Uh, that's another mid '80s, early '90s uh, screen. In case anyone was wondering. Yeah, looked kind of similar to the torture one, which uh, someone in the thread mentioned was from Warzone. Yeah, I was gonna say it's probably from the same one. Yep, most likely. So obviously, we're just backtracking through everyone that uh, has already been brutalized by the Yakuza. Yeah, I mean, I would. You know, fill in the gaps with some info about uh, Iron Man, but let's face it, everyone knows who he is. Yep. <laughs> if only through the movies, then, you know, it's like, well, um, he uh, was once revealed to have been working for Kang the Conqueror? Interesting. <laughs> it was a bad storyline. Our area is almost secure. A few more sections to sweep. Almost? Why isn't it secure yet? Team 6 has not reported in. They were to neutralize the Tor group. Check on them and report back immediately. I should have stayed home today. He really should. Ah! Ah! Uh, no, I didn't get cut off by the blades. That's disappointing. I was trying to get him in the cockpit. <laughs> trying to give him a ride home. <laughs> <laughs> Punisher Airlines. Poor guy. Oh yeah, um, they had this really dumb storyline where it turned out that Tony Stark had been brainwashed by Kang the Conqueror, who's this time-traveling, uh, well, Conqueror, basically. So they killed off Tony Stark, brought him back as a teenage version of himself. And everyone agreed that it was one of the worst storylines Marvel's ever put out. Uh, that sounds almost as bad as the time they killed Frank and turned him into an angel killer. <laughs> um, in terms of boneheadedness, it's definitely a close second. Yeah, like they even got the possessed by someone and all that shit. Yeah, Marvel in the 90s was a really weird time. Sounds um, like it. But yeah, The Crossing, the Avengers storyline... Don't read it unless you really like hurting yourself. <laughs> and if you do, well. And there are better ways. <laughs> <laughs> it also turned the wasp into a literal half human, half bug hybrid, which lasted for about six weeks. That's a brilliant Max Payne money shot there. <laughs> Even had the Spartan liquid, never mind. <laughs> So yeah, those uh, white guys, those guys in the white outfits, uh, you're going to be seeing them a lot more often as well. No kidding. Um, they're pretty much the most difficult enemies in the game at this point. Mm -hmm. And they're going to become the standard enemy type later. Yeah, they take what three, four headshots with an average weapon. It depends on the weapon, but yeah, usually three. Sniper, of course, will gut them instantly. Yeah, sniper's good. Uh, Except with the armored enemies, they're the only ones that won't die immediately from a sniper round anywhere. You actually yeah. have to actively headshot them. Mm -hmm. Very annoying sometimes. Very annoying. This section's also pretty annoying. Until Iron Man shows up. Yeah, Tony Stark's bodyguard. Looks like he was going to say something there, but it was kind of like, fuck, I had something for this. He was just shaking his head going, goddamn Punisher. <laughs> Seriously, I thought we had a system for keeping you guys out. 
Wait, didn't stop the Yakuza either, did it? Shit. Like I said, for all these technology doesn't have facial recognition systems, I mean, what the hell, man? Yep. He went upstairs. I'll get him. Baka. He shut the hatch again. We need the key. Baka Gaijin Disney. But seriously, why is he having... So why are the Rising Sun having their guys basically trying to disassemble the, the wall chat, vent? Just you and me. Probably another case of inefficient Tony Stark technology. <laughs> Made all of his walls scientific or some shit. The eye vent. <laughs> Fair enough, eye vent is also what uh, Punisher calls it when he punches some man to death. I thought it was when he shot a Russian guy in the head. Eh, it's a lot of things, really. <laughs> Actually, if someone dies, that's the eye vent. I like it. So we're about to special eye vent this guy. <laughs> yeah, seems like we've wandered into the set of Tron for some reason. Yeah. What was that? Kenji? Kenji just got derezzed. Oh no! They killed Kenji! You bastards! <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> Oh, such <laughs> weird references in this level. Oh, that's a great special kill. Yeah, Frank somehow gains the power of telekinesis. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that actually happens a lot, and I'm shocked I didn't get more of those on recording. Yeah, I remember some of the special kills and stuff glitching out really badly. Yeah, I've seen some great ones where Frank goes through the whole animation and then starts walking away, and then the enemy, like, flips over nothing and dies. <laughs> I think there's an episode of Buck Rogers in the 24th century, like that. Now there's an obscure reference for you. And if anyone gets that, I will be shocked and amazed. I sure didn't. <laughs> yeah, the white guys also tend to look a hell of a lot like Star Wars Stormtroopers, which is a bit weird. Yeah, I certainly thought they were either that or cyborgs or some shit the first time I saw yeah. them. Especially in this area, because, you know, it does look a hell of a lot like something out of Star Wars. Mm. Yeah, things are very, very comic booky here. Very. And throughout a lot of the rest of the level as well. Yeah. I mean, it, on the one hand, it is at odds with the rest of the, the game, but on the other hand, this is Iron Man's home turf. Yep. So you, you can kind of justify it in that way. Yeah, it's pretty reminiscent of the, uh, like, the second half of the Welcome Back Frank arc. You will kill yeah. me if I tell you. <laughs> the second half is uh, where it basically stops becoming, uh, you know, a, a very dark noirish comic and turns into black comedy fest. Yeah, much less gritty, and there's just superhero cameos all over the place. Yeah, um, that's where Daredevil shows up in the last third as well, isn't it? Hmm. I know he shows up in the original Welcome Back Frank arc. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. That one is very, you know dark and gritty uh, cameo, though. Yeah. Also, uh, tells you a lot... I, I, I know a couple of Daredevil fans who think that it's probably here? the best example of introducing Nothing Daredevil to talk. average folks hmm. if they haven't seen the, the TV series. When they our plans. Yeah, it does give you like very encapsulated look at his morality. Yeah, and who he is as a character Wait, as a whole. Well, yeah. Frank is basically we trying to force Daredevil to kill all. him in order to save uh, one of uh, Daredevil's uh, clients. Uh, yeah. Who is himself a murderous criminal. Yep. And Daredevil tries to do it, but it turns out Frank tripped him anyway. Yeah. Mainly because he I didn't tried, want to leave Daredevil with that on his conscience. Yeah. Which uh, also tells you a little bit about how Frank views superheroes as a whole. Yep. And he has sort of a love-hate relationship with Daredevil. Yeah. They, they've crossed paths quite a few times, and... They kind of see eye to eye, but don't. Yeah. Uh, especially considering how Matt Murdock believes in the law quite heavily. Except for one or two periods in his life, but hmm. that would require a few videos by themselves. Are those like, you know, Punisher Purgatory or that uh, Kong the Conqueror thing you're talking about? Uh, no, I'm thinking more along the lines of uh, Man Without Fear the uh, Frank Miller story. 
Okay. She's regarded as probably one of the best and most essential Daredevil stories of all time. So well written arcs that still take the character in a very different direction. Very well written, yeah. Um, basically, influence to the character was for what tw- the last twenty five years or so. So you know we're talking like key storylines here. Yeah, that's why comic book takers, comic book writers take such a risk, is because sometimes it really, really works out. Yeah. Talk to me. Problem no, is, though, everyone wants to write me. the next definitive story I rather than just telling anything. a good story. Mm-hmm. Which annoys me no end. <laughs> the security call for the weapons locker. It's 1901. Please don't kill me. Oh. Can't resist. Beautiful. Wow, that hair gel he's using goes up like a bonfire. No kidding. <laughs> Nothing but a torso. Really needs to be careful when walking around open flames at the best of times. <laughs> that ammo locker is pretty useful. Except that it really isn't. We're going to replace this gun in just a minute. Yeah. Uh, this is where we get the last major weapon, isn't it? Well, we get it back. We first saw yeah. it in, uh... You know, the uh, docks revisited. On it. I think the one you're talking about doesn't show up for another level or two. Right. Get off! Take it off! <laughs> yeah, it's only a couple of bullets through the torso. What are you? The guys downstairs look like the uh, the stormtroopers, but they're not. <laughs> like that. I renounce my violent ways. <laughs> Uh, that's great. You're still gonna die. Quite horribly, in fact. Oh, how horribly. <laughs> oh, yes. How do I unlock the security system? Gonna make a Miyazaki film know. out of him. No, stop! <laughs> I don't think this is the right time for the Castle of Cagliostro reference, but okay. <laughs> I thought Just so. Just see where we're going with this one. security system to lock everything down! Let me go, please! Nah. Awesome. <laughs> we have access again. I have to stay at my post. But take this, you'll need it. For some reason, these guys sound like cyborgs. Yeah. It's kind of weird. I did a little test here. Battle rifle, perfectly accurate. Mm-hmm. P90. A little bit less accurate. P90 shoots in a zigzag pattern. <laughs> I meant to also show off the um, M16, because uh, that also has a scope now, since the upgrade. <laughs> oh, God. And it's much, much less accurate than the battle, or the um, even the P90. Yeah, it's weird, because I do remember the P90 being a much more accurate weapon than this. I yeah. have no idea what the hell's happened. I mean, compared to most of the other um, automatics, it's very accurate, but it just doesn't uh, do what we needed to on hard mode. Hmm. I don't know, did they alter the bullet spread on hard mode, do you think? I don't know. It's possible. If nothing else, headshots become so essential on hard mode that even a fractional percentage of a chance that you're going to miss one is too much. Yeah. Thankfully, we have a, a headshot machine here. Yeah, Battle Rifle is just phenomenal. The real problem comes in uh, trying to keep it full of ammo. Yeah. It's balanced by the fact that it is so accurate because, you know, one shot and you're done. But they starve you for ammo with it on this stage. Not so much the next stage that I remember because everyone's toting them. Yep. So you can kind of argue that they balanced it in a really stupid way. In a way, yeah. Do you think you can hide from it? Prepare to die. Ah. That guy looks a bit like Samo Hung. Yeah, I like the uh, the sumo yakuza guys. Tell me something I don't know. Go to hell, Punisher! Don't you have shoplifters to execute? Uh, go straight. I promise. 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 Let's see the last page of Punisher Born. Yeah. <laughs> Bond's promises both break. <laughs> but we're gonna get a reenactment of the uh, Russian fight there. First one at least. Very limited reenactment. 
shame. Not everyone can stand up to the beating that the Russian can. He can even survive being decapitated. One monitor, maybe. Three? <laughs> eh, not so much. <laughs> and please don't talk about the decapitation, because uh, that... Ugh. That was an arc. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to bring it up when we were talking about the, uh, the campy half of Welcome Back, Frank. <laughs> oh god, yes. Because the Russian turns into a lady. Uh, is, <laughs> is turned into one, I think, is probably the, the correct way of putting it. Yeah, but he likes it? <laughs> yes, uh, could you maybe perhaps be making bigger? <laughs> it's very, very <laughs> weird and forced and bizarre. <laughs> yeah. It is one of those moments where you're sitting reading it and you're like, should I be laughing at this? Yeah, I honestly or... <laughs> couldn't tell if it was horrifyingly transphobic or just weird <laughs> yeah i mean granted you know it did come out in like 97 yeah which not the most enlightened times yeah not really an excuse but at least it's better than fucking ace ventura <laughs> oh god yeah but um at the, at the same token he's like no i'm totally cool with this yeah <laughs> i'm enjoying it this is fantastic so you know arguably one of the um Let's just say more nuanced portrayals. Yeah. And uh, nothing more than that in the fear of alienating our audience further. <laughs> yes, indeed. At least it's mostly inoffensive. <laughs> mostly. Even I have lines I won't cross. Isn't that lovely? I like interrogating these guys because they all basically write a haiku for you after you break them. <laughs> Also, nice to see that those armored collars that they're wearing don't do shit against choking hazards. Mr. Castle, your life is here! Acknowledged. Yep, he warned us right as we were getting chewed up. Yeah. I think they would have known by the screams and gunshots that they've been listening to for the last 20 minutes, but hey, what do I know? Just you and me. I don't know why they even gave Dave that Nothing headpiece thing. Never actually helps. I was not listening when they discussed- Wait! I remember! We are to steal plans and armor! <laughs> Still not sure why they would need to steal the plans, because, I mean, Tony Stark's equip- uh, you know, manufacturing equipment is pretty specialized. Yeah. You would think that there'd be very few places in the world that would be capable of replicating this technology. Mm -hmm. I mean, it does happen. There's um, been like three or four arcs and storylines based around it. Um, the Armor Wars 1 and 2, which is currently getting a re-showing in Secret Wars, has had him basically dealing with people who've tried to replicate his armor in the past. But considering this is much more standalone, you know, it's kind of weird. Yeah, it's bizarre. It's just one of those things that annoys me. Yep. Because I'm a I'm a gigantic comics nerd, as people have pointed out. Yeah, and who really wants the Punisher going up against a guy in Iron Man armor? I mean, that's not a fair fight. Yeah. Although, funnily enough, I don't think the Punisher's actually had any Iron Man armor himself. I can remember off the top of my head. He sort of does in Punisher 2099. Mm, kind of, but that's uh, that's a storyline all in all on its own. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> that that is a special storyline. And you can take that however you wish to. Yeah. It's the sort of thing that Punisher fans should hate because it's so ridiculous, but Punisher fans love it because it's so ridiculous. So ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, if you've been paying attention to the thread, you'll have already seen the panels that we're talking about. Yep. <laughs> Where do you live? On the edge. <laughs> And what is your age? 39. Caliber. <laughs> That's 38. Shit, fucked that up. Can we do over? Actually, the comic fucked it up and made it 36 caliber, which is like a black powder caliber or some shit. Yeah. Now yeah, I like annoying gun nerds, so... There we go. It works out wonderfully for everyone, except the gun nerds. And when does it ever work out for them? Ah, I was hoping that you'd actually just fire it at close range. Yeah. <laughs> Frank Castle goes rocket jumping. Same with the uh, sniper rifle executions. All he does is beat the shit out of them with the gun itself. Yeah. Uh, it's not so bad except the uh, 
the anti-tank weapon, you're just basically hitting them with a hollow tube. Yeah. You, you would give him a mild concussion at worst, and considering that he's wearing, you know, impact armor. Yeah, maybe that's all he's doing is knocking him out here. The real challenge of this fight is uh, not hitting something that's right in front of your face that you can't see. Very easily done. Yeah. Like, usually when you're behind these windows, they just explode. The rocks explode in your face for some reason. Yeah. I remember the benches and the uh, window frames being the basically your worst enemies in this section. Yeah, and the trees can do it too. Everything is a danger except the fucking helicopter. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the the helicopters get terrible aim to be to begin with. So. What are our losses? Still sweeping the building, sir. Looks like at least 50 guards, 20 scientists, and a few tourists. What were they after? Some blueprints were stolen from design, and several pieces of iron tech armor are missing. And where's the Punisher? I saw him in the middle of things. Missing, sir. We're not sure why he was here. But we do know he was here. Castle knew something. Find out what it was. Yes, sir. There was someone with Castle. Came on the tour with him and left with him. And? Well, sir, he stole some things from the labs. Paper clips, a hole punch, and some scraps of metal. Should I contact the police? I need a drink. It's funny because he's an alcoholic. <laughs> That's literally the exact words I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's worth noting that Spacker Dave in the comics is also a gigantic superhero fanboy. So him stealing a load of useless crap from uh, from Mandy, <laughs> Mandy in the typing pool's desk is perfectly in character for him. Dude, I got Iron Man's paper clips. I'm going to put them in my eye. Dude! I'm going to punch so many holes in my face with this. Lots of bells and whistles, but it has a trigger, ammo, and a barrel. And that's all I need. It also fires high explosive grenades with a detonation delay. Just means it has a grenade launcher. There's some talk in the thread about how this is based on a real gun that never went into production because it's like 18 pounds. Yeah. Um, which... The American government has a really annoying habit of going, here's our new high-tech wonder weapon. It's completely badly designed and a piece of crap, but, you know, um, we got paid tons for it, so you're going to use it. Yeah, Frank actually rails against that in uh, some of the um, Vietnam arcs. Talks about how they supplied all the troops with plastic pieces of shit that were supposed to be the guns of the future. Yeah and uh, everyone would essentially ditch them at the first opportunity and pick up uh, an AK first chance they got. Yep. And here's the helicopter pilot. We've had him on our list for a long time, and if you look at his picture, it spoils that we're going to explode him before we even meet him. <laughs> and Takagi. Going to his building next time. Yep. Still no picture of John Saint, though. wonder why. Hmm. Probably don't want to see it. His face is all fucked up. <laughs> 